They fought us tooth and nail, but they saw that when we organized in solidarity, they had to come to the table and take care of our demands. And UAW family, it's time to tap into that spirit once again. I want to do this uh, clip really, really quick on uh, to let y'all know a little bit about what's going on with the UAW at uh, um, Stellantis. You know, Stellantis has been having a lot of problems in the American market. Um, their car sales have been down, um, even as sales for Ford and GM are up. So you, you know, this is kind of a Stellantis unique issue, uh, the the market issues that Stellantis is having. Um, additionally, there was an employee of Stellantis from Belvedere, Illinois, who was killed in an uh, industrial accident in Toledo, Ohio, Antonio Gaston. And, um, you know, and they, they use that as, as a point for, you know, emphasizing the importance of reopening Belvedere. And so Stellantis is trying to, you know, I shouldn't even say they're trying to walk back. They have said, we're not going to reopen Belvedere in 2027 like we promised. We're not going to do it. That's their official position right now. So they're not even like being coy about it or, or like maybe we will, maybe we want. They're officially, they're saying we're not going to do this. And so um, the UAW has begun the grievance process uh, at the end of which they assert they have a right to strike based on the contract. And um, and they're threatening, you know, they're, they're not being shy about saying we will utilize our right to strike if this is not resolved before the end of the grievance procedure. They are also calling on the um, they're also calling on the CEO of Stellantis, Carlos Tavares, I think is his name, to resign. He is the highest paid uh, automotive executive second to Elon Musk. He is paid more than the CEO of Ford and GM, despite Ford and GM being in better financial situations than Stellantis. And so that's just a really bizarre state of affairs. But let's here is uh, Sean Fain at a at a meeting about this Belvedere issue um, and, and some of the next steps for the UAW. Let's listen to this clip here in Belvedere. We showed what Walter Ruger used to say, what he defined the definition of real power is when you make a company say yes when they want to say no. We got a commitment, a promise from Stellantis to reopen this plant in the life of this contract. Our contract fight was also a defining moment for these companies. They were forced to face the question, how is management going to react now that the American auto worker is waking up and standing up? And they fought us tooth and nail, but they saw that when we organized in solidarity and we didn't let up, that they had to come to the table and take care of our demands. And UAW family, it's time to tap into that spirit once again. For too long in our union, we've let these companies define our future. We've let them set the narrative of the so-called greedy auto worker. You know, every time there's an issue, they blame the workers. And we know damn good and well the workers are not the problem with this company or any other company. Yeah. You know, we, we've let them control our destinies. We've let them run roughshod over our agreements. And when I took this office, I said we need to eliminate the word can't from our vocabulary. You know, they told us, you can't take on all the big three at once. They said you can't win a commitment to reopen Belvedere. And now, of course, the company's trying to say you can't enforce the contract. I'm sick and tired of being told what we can't do. It's time we focus on what we must do to protect our families and our communities. And we're done in the days of this union of every man for himself, every plant for themselves. That's the old way of doing things. You know, I, I've sat here for years as a member of this council, and I've watched multiple plants close year after year, and other plants sit back and say, well, it doesn't affect me. Everything that happens to any plant anywhere affects us. And that's why locals across this country file grievances, because we're going to stand together as a united UAW, and they're going to stand up for you. Yeah. 
You know, you know, one of my favorite quotes by Dr. King is, you know, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And it's no different in our movement. We have to apply that mindset to the UAW and the entire working class. You know, in our best, we stand up for each other. And when we stand up for each other, it's not charity. It's not pity. You know, it's, it's sacrifice, and it's what we call solidarity. It's standing in solidarity with one another. That is what the union's about. That's our power. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the knowledge that we know that our fight at Belvedere is tied to the fights in Michigan, Ohio, and anywhere else in this country. And as Belvedere goes, so goes everybody else. And I want to be very clear on this point. Our goal is not to strike. Our goal is to bring jobs and products back to Belvedere that belong here. But if we have to strike to make that happen, you can be damn good and well sure we're going to do it. We're being very clear with Stellantis' management. We have filed these grievances, and we are ready to resolve them. So my message to Carlos Tavares is you better step up, or the UAW is going to stand up. So there we go, um, uh, you know, being really explicit about uh, what needs to happen <coughs> at Stellantis to avoid a strike. And so we'll be keeping an eye on that story. Uh, if anybody from the UAW wants to call in and talk to us about it or set up an interview, would would love to do that uh, because this is a huge issue. And, you know, being able to actually getting Stellantis to reopen Belvedere. I think is going to be really important for the UAW going forward. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, if you've got anything to contribute on, on that story, uh, feel free to reach out to us, tvlr.fm slash contact, and we'll uh, try to include that in future uh, episodes on this subject. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 